All right, welcome back. It's still The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. This time around, we will be looking at politics um, ahead 2023 presidential bids. Uh, a whole lot happening in the nation's um, political space. On Monday, stakeholders of the People's Democratic Party representing the 19 Northern State and the FCT in Abuja rejected a consensus arrangement by Professor Ango Abdullah led committee, which uh, convened by the former head of state Ibrahim uh, Babangida. They uh, discounted the arrangement as section and an attempt to unfairly narrow the search for the country's next president to some regions of the North. According to them, every aspirant had the liberty to run for office, no matter their region of origin. Now, ahead of its National Executive Committee a meeting, the People's Democratic Party had said it was not under pressure to zone or throw its presidential ticket open. The party also stated that the overall interest of Nigeria would guide the position it would take on the sensitive issue in the days ahead. A national publicity secretary of the party, Debo Olobuagba, said, having received the report of the 37-man committee on zoning, the National Working Committee will transmit same to NEC for thorough study and adoption of opposition. Now, joining us to discuss all of these issues and other matters arising with the People's Democratic Party, and of course, his president should be, is an aspirant of the party and publisher of Ovation International. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's make welcome at Daily Mamadou. Thanks for joining us on uh, The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Good morning, and thank you for inviting me. It is indeed a pleasure. Let's just dive straight into it. 2023, a whole lot is happening, specifically with the People's Democratic Party, which is your party there have been talks about um, zoning consensus party. What is the true picture as we speak? Well, it's quite fluid at the moment. Uh, zoning is contained in the constitution of the party, but I'm now aware of consensus. I know some people have been going around, Saraki, Tambua, Bala Mohamed, Ayatuddin, uh, but I think that fell through already because <laughs> uh, I knew and I had predicted it that once one or two people emerge, the others are going to kick. It happened in the past when you know some young aspirants in 2019, mm. you know, met and they said they will pick one person. The moment they picked one person, every other person scattered. So for me, the issues facing Nigeria should go beyond fighting over zoning or not zoning, consensus or no consensus, because there are too many grave issues for us to deal with. But now we've abandoned governance completely. Mm. Everybody's busy fighting over who will grab power in 2023. Uh, as for me and my house, whatever the party decides, I will obey. You accept. All right. Well, um, your party, like you have rightly mentioned, has been, you know, part of zoning. I mean, zoning has been at the core and is also part of the constitution of your party. And there have been zoning. So what, what, why is it different now? Because it's really stated. I mean, that um, Peter Obi's camp is really not taking it very easy mm -hmm. as your party has dumped the option of zoning. And so uh, screening would actually begin on Friday. So why is the party jumping it and not considering all of a sudden, you know, Nigeria is at the verge of saying, oh, we need leaders who are competent. We need people to salvage the country. This has been the practice over time. So what's different now? Nigeria is a country of big people. What do you mean by big people? I mean big. They are big. They are billionaires. If you look at most of those who want to contest, some of them are still in government and they have access to billions. So the, the pressure on the party must be enormous. In fact, I don't envy our national chairman right now. I predicted it again. If you zoom to the south, you have more than enough powerful people in the north who will kick. If you zoom to the north, majority of our governors are from the south. So head or tail, the dilemma the party is facing now is, hey, do we want to break up this party? Because there are people who are desperate for power. And if you insist on zoning, some people will still go ahead and say they want to contest. And again, 
I think that was an error. And I mentioned this when I paid for the nomination form. If the party wanted to zone, then they should have settled zoning before throwing the forms open to everybody. The moment you ask people to buy the forms, they pay their 40 million, and suddenly you say, oh, we zoned it against, uh, against uh, where you come from. They are going to find. Fairness, yes. So that, I think, was the error. Next time, before they start selling the forms, let them make up their minds about zoning. All right, so let's still talking about this zoning because it has actually got a whole lot of people talking and uh, lots of uh, reactions and counter reactions. Uh, my colleague also talked about um, the uh, Peter Obikam because over time there's been this uh, talk about um, the Southeast Presidency and uh, that particular region is saying that it would be unfair to them if uh, this time around um, the presidency slot is not given to him or to them rather. What is your opinion concerning uh, Saudi's presidency? And uh, do you really think uh, they are, or they will be sort of shortchanged if they were not given? Well, I mean, isn't lot? it obvious that they're already shortchanged? I mean, <laughs> because the PDP has actually done that. But just to also add to mm. you know the question that my colleague has mentioned, Justin, do you think that um, it's fair? You're a presidential aspirant uh, under this is, is party. It, so, 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 do you think that it's fair? I am one of the biggest canvassers for Igbo presidency. But you and I know that power, okay, is not given on a platter. What does you, that mean? You fight for power. You have to fight for So the you South have to, is, you have to, for it? Uh, do you know how many aspirants have come out of the Southeast? Mm. Do you understand? If, for example, you want power, by all means. By now, I expect that the, the governors, the Ohanese, everybody in the Southeast, by now, should have their consensus ready. Mm. You see, politics is a game of mathematics. If you go on Google, check Dele Momodo in search of mathematicians. I was the first to predict how Buhari was going to win election in 2015. Because it's pure maths. So, and in politics, the political parties don't deal with emotion. It was easier in 1999 because the military was leaving. So, the Yorubas were able to blackmail the military that because of what happened to Abiola, power must come to the Southwest. Since then, everybody's been contesting. Even when Yaradua contested, Buhari from the same state still contested. So, Zoni today is more difficult to handle. In the, in, the, in the Southeast, PDP has only two governors, Abia and Enugu. So the other three governors are shared between APC and Abia. So the party will naturally, it may not be fair, it may not be just. Is it I fair? That. No, that's no. what I'm saying. So you, you, you're me, saying it may not be. Say, is it fair? That's why I'm telling you that it is a game of number. Why am I in the race? I'm a friend of the East. In fact, I'm the only one mentioned publicly last year, February. The video is available by Mazin Amdekanu. That if every Nigerian has the mindset of a daily moment, there would be no point fighting for Biafra. The reason why the East is insisting is because they feel shortchanged, marginalized, suppressed, oppressed. You see Operation Python dance in the East, but you don't see it in the forest of Meduguri or in the forest of Katsina. Or, you know. So people are fighting not because they don't know that we need good leadership. For me, above zoning. The first thing is, are we going to get the best? Even in the Southeast today, if you have the answer is, choose just one person, you'll be shocked. So in that it may be impossible. So in fact, for all that you have said, that the issue that we have, uh, that have um, plagued us in our polity, is more of um, governance. And because if we had good governance, I'm trying to you know, extrapolate from all that you've said, uh, this issue of marginalization and of course... Uh, uh, it, it will never come up. Okay. It will never come up. No, but, but let's not even stay with your party. And quite interesting that you are um, also aspiring to become president under this political party. So we say that um, there's always an adage that would say that, I mean, how you, you sleep is how you die. 
So the way your party is behaving, uh, if your party has been very strong on um, zoning, and now it comes to a point where it feels like, I mean, it doesn't feel like, but your party should already know that it gets to a particular region. But then the issue of competence and who gets it becomes very <laughs> numb. So, so do you, you, think you your keep making a mistake. Which is? That mistake is that when it comes to the South, we always stand alone. Stand alone. Zeke will not work with Awolowo. And Zeke work with Awolowo. Shagari will not have been president. The same thing is happening now. Look at the North. In the North today, you have Dr. Abubakar Bukola Saraki, who is from Kwara. Mm. As far as I know, he's a Yoruba man. But in the North, oh yes, his name is Oluwa Bukola, the son of Oluwa Shola. He's a Yoruba man, but caught into North Central. North Central. The North accepts him as a Northerner. In the South, the Igbo will say, I must be the one. The Yoruba will say, I must be the one. The Igbo will say, I must be the one. That is the problem. When you talk about zoning, the first thing is, does it go north? Does it go south? south. So let it come to the south, then let the southerners negotiate So the southerners themselves. have not been able to speak with one voice. That is the problem. Right now, I'm the best place of all the aspirants because... I am from South South. My father is Edo. My mother is Oshu. I was born in Ileife. So I'm a child of diversity. So I'm equally strong in two zones okay. instantly. So if you are talking about zoning today, and the party would look at, okay, who can serve us? Who can give the, deliver the votes? You will, because ethnicity, whether you like it or not, even in America, you have racial tension. Where the blacks, the Hispanics, and the whites, they have to slug it out. The same thing is happening in Nigeria. Today, ethnicity is number one on the table of elections. Where you come from is number one. Before people even talk about your competence. So, but let's, let's get to you now. Yes. I mean, it's very interesting that you are also part of the race. I'll mention that again. Now, you have a, a member of the House of Representatives uh, in Ogun State. Uh, his name is Kola Wale. And he's talked about the fact that zoning will not, you know, lead Nigeria to where we are. Looking at a lot of the challenges that we uh, are faced with as a people. Do you think that you have the capacity to salvage this country? Oh, definitely. How? There are not too many global brands in any country. I'm one of such. I mean, you, you know it for a fact that politics is about managing people and resources. If you talk about the economy, most of our politicians who have never managed one million suddenly you entrust them to manage a 10 trillion dollar economy they are going to collapse i managed a business from 20,000 pounds and turned into a multi-million dollar empire for 26 years that's tenacity that means i am very frugal in the days of tribulations we were able to withstand all the heat and the business has survived till today that's what the country what nigeria needs now is a ceo not a politician, a CEO who has accomplished something in his private capacity. So when, we so when you talk about capacity, I mean, if I ask you now to mention 18 out of 36 governors in Nigeria, I'm sure you might not even remember their names. If you remember their names, you might not remember their states. If you remember their states, you will not know what they did before they became governor. That's the truth. Okay, there is so nobody in Nigeria today mm -hmm. who will not know about a brand, mm -hmm. Dele Momodu, whether at home or abroad. I'm sure you know that. Okay, so um, let's also delve into it now. Uh, as much as you wouldn't to, I mean, you know, um, there would be some agreement to say that, hey, you, you have actually been outstanding and, and you are Thank an icon you. to recall. I, 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 I love the compliment. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we look at the current reality. Mm -hmm. Nigeria is a trouble spot. Mm -hmm. Security is top on the notch. Security concerns. I mean, as we're talking right now, the DSS is saying that they are plans to bomb, you know, some parts of the country. I mean, almost Short all parts target. of the country. Uh, you know, relaxation specific. Uh, they are specific. So, so you have relaxation centers and what have you, religious center. And uh, these are concerns. You are saying that Nigeria does not need a politician, but a CEO. And so uh, how would a CEO manage the security concerns? A CEO is able right to now? manage anything 
and everything. So, so, so if, you, if, you, if, you, if you become uh, a flag bearer, mm -hmm. uh, if you actually given the ticket and then Nigerians will have to decide who they vote for, what, what would you do? How would you address the security concerns I've of Nigeria? I started doing it. What also, you will become, done. what you will do as a rich man, you start practicing as a poor man. Okay? I started doing it. So have you been I'm doing it? Now, I'll tell you. I'm the only one reaching out now to every part and to the principal actors in the trouble spots. I've been to Kaduna to see Sheikh Gumi. We're talking. So, so you have seen Sheikh Gumi? Yes. I went to Kaduna. Uh, I and you don't think that he should be reported? Then he should be arrested? Yes, please do. <laughs> we are finding peace. Peace is not a one-way traffic. It's a two-way traffic. If you want peace, you must seek peace. And you don't seek peace with yourself. You seek peace with your enemy or perceived enemy. Sheikh Gumi is not my enemy. I why, why is he not your enemy? Because nobody, I've never heard that the government of Nigeria has you know, arrested him for committing any offense. So, and I don't work. But in, whatever his alliance with, you know, I mean, he's, he, he sounds like he's in for every the... country. There are people who have access. In his own case, I don't know if he's religious, I don't know what kind of access, how he's able to gain the access, but they have people who negotiate on behalf of countries, and I believe you need to find the root cause of this problem. But aside from he the told me yeah. clearly, yeah. sir, he told me clearly that politicians will never change Nigeria, and he gave all the reasons for it. The corruption involved, even in the issue of fighting insecurity in Nigeria, he mentioned everything. He stays in his house. His house is an open place. He stays there. I went to see him. I've been to Meduguri, which is one of the danger spots. I spoke to the people. I went to the market. They told me I shouldn't try. I went there. I'm a Nigerian. Uh, in those who own Yoruba Nation, Sunday Bo, Chief, Sunday Adeyemo, known as Sunday Bo, yeah. I went to Kotonu when he was arrested. I went to go and look for him, saw him, discussed with him. That's what leaders should do. If our leaders had done what I'm doing now, maybe we won't get this. When they were doing Operation Python Dance and attacking Namdekanu's house, did any of our southern governors try to see what exactly these IPOB people want? No, it's all about, oh, they are terrorists, they are. So while you were busy shooting your own people down here, some people were busy pumping, others out there. So a leader must treat Nigerians equally. All right. The day you do that, you will see that a lot of our problems will ever Okay, let's talk more. This uh, CEO versus uh, the whole politician thingy. Fine, you have accomplished so much as a CEO. Uh, you are known internationally with your magazine and all that, the humanitarian efforts that you have done over the years. But you will agree with me that aside from being a CEO, we still have to factor all the politics and all the games of numbers that you have talked about. Now, you might have succeeded so well in business and uh, in the economy and all of that, but you have to run under a platform and you are running on the platform of the people's democratic party you know how do you see the chances of your party uh, judging by the fact that um, they had done 16 years and uh, uh, they were toppled as it were by and the old progressives congress you know which claimed that, that the, P, uh, the pdp did not do so much for the country so on what wings on what basis on what change or what drive uh, is the pdp uh, going to present to ensure that nigerians maybe love them again and maybe even love you the truth is PDP will come back. If, when? Wait, wait. In 2023? In 2023, if one, it shows that it has learned from its past mistakes. Have they learned? Oh, that's what we're hoping to see from this weekend. A party that was removed from power after 16 years cannot come back and repeat the same mistake they made in 16 years. You see, because the moment you start throwing up the same people that Nigerians did not want to see, there is a risk. If they were so good, we wouldn't be where we are. So there are issues so that, 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 that is why you see that around. in PDP today, there are only a few people that you can consider to be fresh and refreshing. There are only a few of us that you can say have accomplished globally. All over the world, people are moving in the direction of technocrats. Mm. Politics is not a game. Leadership is the game. 
Leadership means managing people and resources. A man who has not managed people and resources cannot manage the country. I know that if my company is broke, we must downsize or downgrade. You cannot continue to leave. Nigeria is the only place where politicians live as if every day is Christmas. I will, I will. You need a business inclined person to understand that our politicians must downgrade their lifestyle. So, so we, we, we totally understand all of that. And I would definitely get to the part where we ask you, of, I mean, like I have rightly mentioned, I ask you, the major issue that we're faced with is, uh, you know, security. And you have mentioned that uh, you have... And lack of unity. Those are the two major... And so the how two are linked. Even so we'll get back, I, I, we will definitely get back to that. But, but before we get back to that, the party, because you're part of the party... I mean, we can't separate you from the party. Now, your party is now saying that um, we can't stop any presidential aspirant. It's unconstitutional. Really? How? When it, your it, party... It, it is not in the constitution of the country, but it's in the yeah, constitution of the, the party. party. So, so, yeah. so okay. yes, we understand, but how, how can your party be that way when you have, over time, been in support of this principle and it has worked for you? All of a sudden... You understand that it's not also part of the constitution. Do you trust this party to you see, also support you? Support your, I mean, you trust the delegate because they're not going to go by consensus. So do you, well, do you trust them to, 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 to support you to become president? My job is to go there and persuade my party. It is not the job of the party to assume that they can deliver. I just told you a few things now. Mm -hmm. If you talk about ma mathematics... It's going to be difficult for PDP not to consider someone from the Southwest who also has South South and who is friends with the Southeast. That's the easiest way to win the math mathematics. There is no other way. If you look at it, it looks like APC is moving southward. So, are you telling me that PDP will then allow? Let's say the pick it in Ugo or Noshibajo or Rotimi Amitio. And you say you can ignore the second largest catchment area for votes, which is the Southwest. It's going to be impossible. If you make the mistake of picking one local champion from the North and you come and pick just anybody from the South and you assume they will be able to defeat APC, it's going to be difficult. So that's where I come in. I'm the only aspirant today who combines two zones automatically out of three. Two zones out of three. Oh. And very close to the Southeast. What the South needs to get power is easy. You need someone who can unite the three geopolitical zones in the South. For well, your party, I, mean, I mean, just before Justin comes in now, your yes. party has ruled out the issue of consensus. And mm. so uh, you're left with direct or indirect primaries. Do you, do you think that um, the delegates would actually go for you? How can I assume they won't go? The assumption of most Nigerians is that the party ticket will be sold to the highest bidder. And of course, I'm not the highest bidder. But I contested before. I contested in 2011. The party has to be realistic. I am telling you today in PDP, there is no aspirant that controls two regions by parentage. And a third region by association. There is none in the party today. If you know of one, mention the person. Okay, so that there is none. Okay, so, so that makes it that your party oh, supports. So, so you, you become. You, you so this is what become. I am offering my party. God donated me to PDP. God donated me. <laughs> it's a donation. Because you don't get it every day. No, okay. tell me if you know of anybody whose father is Sasha, his mother is Yoruba, and he is very strong in Yoruba. And you are competent as well. And extremely competent. Okay, not let's, just competent. Uh, let's talk about all the global people. brand, a CEO that you can take to anywhere, who has rubbed shoulders with world leaders, with presidents. There is none today in PDP. Mm. None. That's the truth. So how do you um, resolve the whole issue of uh, money politics, uh, the issue of corruption, which uh, this present administration actually wrote on when they came into power, that they were going to stamp out corruption, insecurity, and all of that. When uh, we hear of uh, firms uh, being sold as much as um, 40 million, 100 million, which in itself would actually limit a lot of people who 
ordinarily want to contest because some are saying that with this um, so much money involved in politics, at the end of the day, the issue of corruption will also set in. How do you reason all of that? It is on record that Daniel Mamadou is the only one, the only aspirant who publicly spoke up against having to pay 40 million for a party. APC is even far worse. 100 million. I mean, it's atrocious, but you must fulfill all righteousness. I'm grateful to my friends, to the young people who donated 500, 1,000. I have all the records who we'll publish. You know, I was lucky. It wasn't easy to pay 40 million, especially in today's economy. You were lucky because in you Nigeria, have a pedigree. They're not all the pedigree. That's what I'm saying. That. But I spoke up against it, and I hope that my party will think seriously about it in the future. But let's move beyond that. I was saying, you were talking about corruption and everything. Most politicians have been trained to see government as the only place they can make money. Even now, as I now run around, reaching out to people, I'm still working at ovation. I'm not going to kill my job. So what we need to encourage in Nigeria, that's why you need technocrats, is to make sure that anybody who cannot show what he has managed successfully should not even aspire to be the president of Nigeria. You must come and show us. If you had cows like Buhari had, so come and tell us when you retired, how many cows you have been able to breed, how much you've made from it, and how you've survived, you've been able to pay your children's school fees at home and abroad. The moment you do that, you see that a lot of our politicians will run away. People, once you become governor, you have access to government money. It's not embarrassing that almost 90% of those running now are still in government. Mm -hmm. And we all know, I know what it costs to run a presidential campaign. So where is the money coming from? So, 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 so let's come back to this now. I mean, um, this is our current reality. And uh, as much as we are looking at 2023, the conversation is we're asking questions. We're, we're looking at how you intend to solve the problem. So let's even move away from the political party and say you have the ticket to run and, and then you're asking Nigerians to vote for you. And if you become president or power venture, what, what, what would you do Let's look at security. You've mentioned that. We also look at the economy. We know um, the death that we are actually involved in right now. We're looking at, you know, Nigerians' debt profile. We're also looking at the number of, um, you know, unemployed persons in the country. We're also looking at the fact that infrastructure is nothing to write home about. And you find the issue, which is on top also of the charts, the issue of um, Nigerians not being united, and that has necessitated the issue of, um, you know, IPOP asking, we want to become, you know, uh, a republic, we want self-governance yes. and all of that. You also have the Duduwa Republic. You have different persons agitating to say, and maybe private or individuals also come up to say, hey, I want to become a republic. How would you address these issues? Economy, security, and of course, the unity of Nigeria. Let's say we've We're very dependent on oil, don't forget that. Yeah, let's say, yeah, foolishly so. Let's say we've touched on the case of security. Security, okay. Economy. I've told you, a man who has never managed any business successfully, how will he manage government funds? As a CEO of my company, I know the budget. I know how much it will cost to pay salaries. I know how much it will cost to gather stories, I know how much it will cost to pay my printers, I know how much it will cost to pay cargo, freight services, I know how much it will cost for security. We are spending more than we are making. Now we are borrowing money to fund lifestyle. There is no CEO who will do that. I always say it that Nigerian presidents want to live like American presidents. You cannot practice capitalism where there is no capital. Hmm. Nigeria does not have the money. But have you seen any politician downgrade? No. I know what I've had to do to manage my campaign. And I'm approaching it as a businessman. 
you must never spend more than you earn. That's so how, how do you intend to achieve that? Oh, it, 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 it begins with the leader. Once you have a leader who understands that politicians cannot live on largesse and turn government into a bazaar, you will see that people will wake up. It, it starts with you. Once you make yourself, and I'm going to sign an agreement with the people of Nigeria on deliverables. So, so, what are, so what are your deliverables for the economy? That's what I'm telling you. Specifically, specifically, I mean, I mean, I mean, specifically just, talk just about we come poverty in. alleviation because of most Nigerians are still wallowing. You know, we have reports from IMF every day, World Bank, okay. and um, it's as you do it, nothing it, to change it. No, it's not about banding terminologies. Mm. It's about practical existence. Let me give you an example. You mentioned poverty alleviation. During the period of COVID, if you go on Twitter or social media, go and Google it. I tried to do what government could not do properly. Government promised to give 5,000 Naira to poor Nigerians. They could not do it successfully. Do you understand? It's one of the reasons why people were saying, what happened to all this money? Billions they just put on the table. I was able to develop an app. Technology can help us solve a lot of problems. That app, I have all the states in Nigeria. People apply online, they register. Today I have 66,000 applications, out of which we've paid about 10% of them. Five, five. The same thing government could not do. We have it on an app developed by a Ghanaian, Farida Bidwe. A Ghanaian saw it on Twitter and called me and said, we can do an app, and they did it. So what it means is that even for poverty alleviation, if you eliminate corruption, more money will get to There is no state in Nigeria today there is no region part of Nigeria today that I have not distributed my own palliatives. The government has not been able to do that. Dele Momodu, let's, let's get to this particular point. It's very practical. We, we look at our economy in Nigeria uh, from 1966, shortly after you, know, you have the civil war and we're trying to recover. We have always talked about developmental plans and so how we want to get out of it. But the reason why our developmental plans and the plans have failed, uh, Vision 2020, what have you, has failed is because we constantly have to depend on externals to sustain the budget. And so we borrow. Now, majorly because we're very dependent on, you know, um, oil for our earnings. And you know what happens. For instance, the uh, Russian-Ukraine invasion, Nigeria is actually shivering. And that's because we're supposed to be making money. So we have been very monocultural. The issue of diversification has been a great conversation, but it feels like it's a leap service. Our government has not been very sincere. So the question is, if you become president tomorrow, what would you do? How do you take our economy from, you know, a monocultural economy to that economy where we're not shivering even when you have the U.S. and Germany uh, quaking and then we begin to shiver? Governance is not rocket science. You are talking to a man who has operated globally in over 60 countries on five continents. I know how to diversify. I have the contact, I have the connection. The first thing Nigeria needs to provide is trust. Nobody invests in a country where they know your investment will be wasted, where they know politicians are going to take away all your money, where you have to bribe everybody from the doorman to the highest man in, in, in the country. You need a business-inclined person. I will give you examples. 20 years ago, I was invited to Dubai to market Dubai to Africa. Dubai was at that time just a, like a trade post. We changed sea parties and die. We did the cover to see Dubai and die. Does Dubai have the kind of oil that we have? There are countries that don't have oil at all. We have oil, we have gas, we have bitumen, we have mineral resources in abundance. You have to eliminate corruption urgently. If you don't do that, no investment will come. You have to eliminate profligacy. It's not about economic theories now. And I've told you already that you cannot be practicing capitalism where you don't have capital. Mm. Our politicians must be compelled to downgrade. And the people of Nigeria too must ask questions from their leaders. 
So invariably, Nigerians over time have not really been asking the right question. No. Are they just subservient uh, and just satisfied now, they just get? It's very easy for some politicians to become president. Anybody can be president. If you have enough money, I jack the party structures, I jack the party ticket, and then you know you are one leg close to the presidency. That is their theory. But I was going to tell you that I contested before in 2011. Well, I didn't have money. I was the poorest of the three. Oh. Yet, how was I able to defeat them? Based on my record, accomplishment, reputation, integrity, the party, National Conscience Party, I respect them till tomorrow. The night before the primaries, I was told my co-contestants were going to, I don't know what they were doing. But I sent two copies of ovation to each of the rooms. That was my own bribe to them. I wanted them to see what I do for a living. And let them now compare me to the so others. So has that changed? You have money now because you said you had money. No, you it's the same thing I'm doing. So if I, even if I have billions today, I'm not going to pay a dime to anybody. How can I say I want to change the country and I'll be encouraging corruption? We know those who encourage corruption. And some Nigerians are leading them on. They are over-promoting them. Oh, really, you have no chance against A. You have no chance against B. Why? Because you don't have money. Where did the money come from? So that is why I told you that even the followership must change. Okay. The leadership must change, but the followership must change. Now I have friends who say, oh, really don't bother. The night before we were able to raise the 40 million, I almost couldn't sleep. I was in Abuja. And some friends would call, oh, why are you wasting your time now? Even if you have 40 million, I said, so what will I do with 40 million? Go and marry more wives, or go and carry girlfriends, or what? I would rather spend it on legacy. At my age, what I'm living for, and work, what I'm working for is legacy. So we must change our mindset. It right. is doable. Look, if one million Nigerians give me 1,000 Naira today, that's one billion. Okay. It's money. It's all about money. That's what they do elsewhere. Money is important, even in America. But they raise it by making the people partakers, investors, and stakeholders. All right. Just before we go, I, I just want to get a um, reaction uh, from you directly. You know, there was this talk, um, you know, that trended a bit about uh, how you uh, want to be the president and you residing in Ghana and uh, also having business headquarters in Ghana. So I just want you to react uh, specifically. Yeah, I mean, so we'll not just being let, let me tell you that Thomas Spain is one of my favorite authors. He wrote a book called The Age of Reason. If he was alive, he will write today the age of ignorance. It is ignorance of anybody. Just because somebody has a business in Ghana means that he has moved his business to Ghana. So maybe you're I, not patriotic. I expanded to Ghana, just like Coca-Cola left Atlanta and went global. I just told you that I operate in over 60 countries. So I can so do I now have my headquarters in the no. I passed through Ghana on my way to exile in 1995. And I liked what I saw. I saw the work that Rollins was doing. And I expanded there. Before UBA came to Ghana, I was in Ghana. Okay, let's not be mentioning so much brands. No, no, I'm, okay. Oh. I'm just telling you that okay. now we have a lot of Nigerian companies in Ghana. Does that mean they've killed their business? Nigeria is 80% of my business. 80%, not even. <laughs> All right. Yes. Well, let's just wrap it at that uh, because you have uh, actually indeed touched on so many uh, angles. I wish we had all the time to get uh, so much um, from you. But uh, indeed, we must say a very big thank you to you for joining us on this particular discussion. No, it's always a pleasure to come to your beautiful studio. Thank, thank, you, thank you so, so much. <laughs> All right, uh, that's uh, we'll leave it at that. Uh, we'll take a quick break uh, in a moment when we we'll come back. We'll be talking about security concerns and the DSS uh, is raising the alarm over suspected uh, criminal gangs uh, who are threatening and um, soft and uh, some hard targets. We're looking at the way forward in a moment when we return to join us again.